Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of our Project Hybrid Bike Build on Motors for the Masses. And what are we doing today, Malcolm? You tell me. Okay, well, today we are making number plate and light brackets, as well as other stuff. We could have gone onto eBay and spent 20, 30, 40 quid on a bracket for the back, but no, we thought we'd make something bespoke and rather unique. So we've gone and got some metal, and we're going to be making our own bracket for the back for the indicators and lights. We've got a great design that we think you're going to like. We certainly like it. That's so long as we can fit it where we want it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. Okay, we have to make sure it lines up with the suspension and the engine and the wheel and the tyre and the seat. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. We're doing that and we're also going to start to put the bike back together because we have to make sure everything is in the right place before we can manufacture the battery box and then to make sure everything all lines up before it's stripped down again and sent off for powder coating. So, roll the intro. we've come across is that um, I put the suspension on like this and Malcolm said why can't we put the suspension on like that he's got a point we're not quite sure why we can't do it perhaps someone can tell us why the gas canister has to face back because looking online everybody has got the gas canister facing out the back I don't know if it's a gravity thing or, or what that's about I'm guessing it's something to do with the high point the highest point would be where this junction is right so if there's something moving through there some air or gas or whatever that's going to be moving on the highest point. Okay. But the difference is so little, I can't see it being an issue. But no, well, what we're going to do now, we're going to show you this type of design we're going to hopefully achieve. Achieve, yes, yeah. exactly that, yes. Uh, uh. Can you please stop making noises? <laughs> Are you pushing that thing or what? <laughs> it just seems a bit sexual for me. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Aggression! Coming in. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to not to do. So the idea was to mount them on the back here. We're not quite sure which way to do it yet. Indicate on the bottom or on the top? I think the bottom says so sticky out anymore. Yeah? I think there has to be a certain distance between the indicators anyway. Okay, yeah. So having it out a little bit is going to be... Keeping within so, that. because we've got this piggyback to contend with, we were going to have it originally like that, and then we plan to have it like that, but we think we're going to have it, that one slightly further in, and that one slightly further out. Which means we can tuck it around the piggyback canister. Still, still staggered? Or yeah, so you have, have the indicator out and back. Just the, the width of the flange of the lamp like there. That? Like that? Yeah, but not quite touching. Okay. And then, so make, just make sure there's like a finger space around that shot canister. Yeah, there is. So basically, it's just shy of this. The only thing we've got to be careful of is to make sure we can undo this bolt. The seat bolt. To get the seat off. Yeah, that is an issue. But we don't want to go too far back, because then it'll stick out beyond here, and then it gets in the way of where the number plate's going to be. Yeah, but I'll be honest with you, removing the seat isn't going to be a regular occurrence. Okay. So I can't... Something else. See it being too much. We can't make this bracket until the wheel's on. No, we need to know where the wheel's going to be. So what we're going to do is use these original holes here that the seat bolts onto to make the bracket. Now initially we thought, oh, okay, well if we do that, every time we undo those bolts, the whole number plate bracket and the indicators and the rear lights have got to come off every time we take the seat off. So we thought, okay, we're going to put a brace in here. Um, there's going to be a tray in here for the wires and stuff to go in and then there's going to be a bracket in here to bolt through to that bracket to hold it in place so if we do need to take the seat off it'll just be a bit floppy but it won't actually come away so it'll all make sense once we've made it so let's get cracking okay that doesn't that isn't clear it needs to go down clear what doesn't, the bolt doesn't clear the hole there or something isn't it? yeah so that is going to be Say about seven. We can always shave a bit off. 
That's seven centimeters. Just for that one. Yeah, and we'll do the But we're gonna continue, aren't we? We'll mirror it. Well no, because it's gotta come out and down, so we're gonna to have to do one piece okay. in the right direction to get both lamps caught by. Because we need to catch both lamps at once on one piece here. Yeah. So it needs to be No, it's come down a bit. Long enough to there. Okay. That way. Go that way. Okay. okay, so we've got Actually, they could be in line, they don't need to be. Are we going to stagger them here? Yeah, stagger them, yeah. Well, how far is that stagger? So hang on, let's measure this first. We've got. Say. Okay. I think the best thing well, to do I'm, is start I'm, from here. We're welding it to this, yes? No. Oh, it's just. It's going to be bound out. Okay, um, so we've, we've got. If we start 50. from here, do a bend, do the bend, with the huge long length, is what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then we'll cut it off at that point, and then we're going to weld a piece on. And then it's going to be welded to another piece that runs across the top, and then it'll be mirrored the other side. Okay, so you put it in place, and I'll sort of work around it. Okay. That's roughly where we want it, isn't it? So we've got about three. About five there. Yeah, about 14, 15, that's right, about 15. So six inches of steel. So now the hole is drilled, make sure it fits, and then we can put this in place to line up ready for the next one. Okay, so now that's in place there, we line up where the other one goes, and drill the hole. Right about there somewhere, put it down, we can adjust that height afterwards to make sure we've got clearance for the seat bolt. Okay. Which is why it's so long. So let's drill the other hole. So there you have it. Roughly in position. Slightly staggered, staggered backwards as well. I think that's gonna look pretty damn small once we're all done and dusted. So we've now got to put the additional piece in the back there which will bolt on there and then a brace across which will also bolt up into the the uh, wheel arch train tray thingy, and then mirror it for the other side. In fact, Let's we're going to look from the back. Mirror it from the other side right now. So from the back, it'll be slightly staggered, but um, I think that's quite nice. It's very unique. It's different, isn't it? Loving that. Obviously, we're going to round off these edges and smooth it all up, and this will be powder coated as part of the frame. Yeah, we've dressed up nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Cool. So the brackets are made, we're just going to mock them up and see which angle we need to put them at and where we need to cut and make the second part of the bracket to bolt onto the seat bracket holder thingy. Yeah, right. close enough. Why are the indicators on the bottom, I hear you ask? Well, because they stick out further and they're the most prominent things when you're riding along. Plus, I think there's a legal reason for them to be further apart. There's a minimum distance or something daft. Okay. Now it takes through. So it's going to be just behind <coughs> that. 
thing and tucked in there. So that's, it's, it's. So that is what it's going to look like. I like it. It might need to come down a touch to make access to the hole better. Oh yeah. Yeah. The bolt seat, uh, seat bolts on even, so the bolt bracket will come down, bolt through, lovely jubbly. There'll be a brace across here to the other one this side, and that will be the piece where we can mount it to our under tray. And then on the other side of here will be where our light thingy with the actual bulbs on fixes too. So it'll be secured both here and here, and here and here. Lovely. That also means then if we do take the seats off. It's still secure to the under tray. Yes, it won't fall off. So we've got that now bolted and welded into place. Like so, nice and sturdy, absolutely fantastic. It's only welded as one piece of bracket and then bolted in here. That is not going anywhere. And it will have additional bolts here into the plate when we put that in. Yes, so to line that up. Got these we just need to get in the position where we want them. You just go to the other side, that's it. That's it. And then follow the, the line of the back of this shock hoogie. So mine needs to be... Get the height. Like so. I want to make sure it's correct from the, the back end. So maybe we should do that one first. Yeah, we'll do this one. It's then when it's done, that. line this one up to fit. There's the bracket all welded up, and now that's going to bolt back on, and the lights are going to go onto it. So oh, let's have a look. It's got to be clean first. Oh, right, okay, so it's got to be clean, then it's got to go back on. Yeah, the grind all them welds up. Yes, it's got to go on. They know what I mean. Well, they might not. Right, carry on. Carry on. So this is what the bracket looks like now. Now we're now going to add another bar across the edge here across from there to there and two bars coming down one there and one there to mount another plate on that's what it looks like with the wheel on so this will be a lot easier once it's affixed to the under tray yes for now and we're not having to wrestle with it so, so once the under bracket is in and it's bolted to the tray this bracket won't move, so we can take the seat on and off without worrying about this bracket being in line. We've actually raised the suspension, so we've got a little bit of extra clearance now. We've discussed this, and these threaded pieces are just too long. So what we're going to do is separate all of this, take the wires out, and just cut them off refit them in so that the wires will be closer to the bar here. I might drill a little hole towards the back so we can have a maybe a cable tie I guess there and then up there as well and we can tuck the wires up out the way nice and tidy in there and the little sheaf things will be pulled down. But I think for the most part it's looking good. It does yes. Obviously that bracket is going to be powder coated the same colour as the frame so it's going to be satin gunmetal you put that number plate in, pretty much where it's going to be. See, that's the sort of there ish. Yeah. And we can tuck a light up just behind there to light up the thing. And now, are we obstructing the lights too much, do you think? Is it worth putting a side mounted number plate on? I don't know if we're allowed. Yes, I think you are. Um, we'd actually like your opinions on that. 
whether you think it should go for a side mount and double plate. Bear in mind this is the UK and they do have laws against the size of a number plate, which is pretty much this is a good template for. It's under there. I mean, look, if it is that size, look, it does obstruct. It does, but only that side. I can still see this side. And I can see, I can see the indicator. That's it. So can we have your views on that? I'm looking at the camera here, actually, and I can see there's not a lot of space there. No, but I can be angled up a little bit. That's the problem with the UK. We do have some massive number plate laws. But obviously it'll be the other side. I won't move with it. Trap is that is enormous, that sticks out so far. <sighs> it's like the blasted L plates on the front forks on the 125s, they just stick out so much. Well, and even the little bloody micro ones that everyone seems to razz around on. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> oh, that's it. We should have a, a, a backrest or... Oh, that's what we want. We want those big those, um, drag bar things. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, Problem I'm... solved. Or, oh, well, you know, say on your backpack. <laughs> yeah. Or, oh, just get the number airbrushed into my helmet. Okay, we've just had a couple of ideas. I had the idea of my FB Mondial. Do you remember? Had the two bars came around here and the bracket on the back and the number plate sat on that. With that in place, that would take away any kind of problem of covering up the lights, and you can still see the tire exposed, and the number plate is there. I think that would be superb, and that's definitely the way I think we're going to go. Definitely, and we'll, we'll make that from just stainless rod. Exactly, and you had an idea. Yeah, so instead of having, excuse me, <laughs> instead of having these wires and bits of thread sticking in here, and looking, let's just face it, crap, um, we're going to take the wires out from the inside of these Box. threaded shaft bits, cut them flush so that it's just a nut with a tiny bit of thread, and block it. And then we'll have the wires come out of the casing, just on the underside of the lamp on the back here. With a small we'll, grommet. With a small rubber grommet. And we'll run the cable up the back of the bracket, and we'll put a piece of metal on the back of the bracket down there to form like an L shape, bit of rib to hide it, bit of um, support, and hide the cable up. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll neaten that up. So, we're going to do some research and um, we're going to find some metal rod to make a bracket around the back. In fact, we can probably use the metal of the old mudguard that was on the front. Possibly, it might not be big enough. Because we're going to have the two bits of metal um, left over, you know, the two over pieces. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, because we're going to be modifying just the front bracket only to carry a small mudguard, I not a massive one. I uh, know I'm spending your money, but I would rather get two, get two new bits, just a bit of nice 10mm um, stainless rod. And bend it. And bend it into the shape we need. Okay. And we can still weld to it. We'll get someone to just TIG it with some stainless because that would be nice and it won't rust. Okay. And we can also polish it up and it will look lovely. Okay. So that's the plan then. Unfortunately, we didn't get everything done that we wanted to do. We hit a couple across the, we came across even a couple of snags, and um, but we overcome them. That's what happens. These bike builds do throw up problems. You expect that, and we expected it, and we had it. So yeah. whatever, doesn't matter. And we talked about talked about moving the lights out, whatever. No, they can stay exactly as they are. Yes. So that's the plan. Number plate is going to go here behind the wheel. You'll still see all the wheel exposed, and tidy up these wires, change them to come out of here, and there you go. So, thank you very much for joining us for this week. We'll be back next week with another bike review, mm. and then after that we'll be back on the bikes, and we've got another car review coming up soon as well. So, until next time, please ride and drive carefully, please subscribe if you haven't already, please like and share, follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you again soon. So, until next time, have fun. Thank you. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye bye. Alright. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Result? Yeah. Oh! oh, 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 oh Fucking hell. Get old. Oh.